In this video, we will discuss preventing session hijacking and forgery attacks. The topic will be broken down into two segments. In segment one, we will discuss regenerating session IDs and providing a logout option. In part two, we will discuss keeping sessions short and not relying solely on the session identifier. The session identifier is a means by which the browser can identify itself to the PHP application. The session identifier is randomly generated the first time the session is instituted on the server. The session identifier is normally propagated through cookies. This presents a window of vulnerability, however, as if the session identifier is allowed to remain active for a long period of time, the attacker could conceivably, through various means, grab a hold of the identifier and hijack it, essentially, and allow themselves to pose as the user. To give you an example of this, let's move to a demonstration website. The name of the file being executed is displayed at the top of the screen. Let's log in as a test user. Let's say for the sake of argument that the attacker is able to grab the session identifier. We can now move to another browser to simulate the attack. We refresh the page. We tamper with the request. We copy the session identifier into the cookie and we have now posed as the user. The attacker at this point would be able to operate the website and the website would be unaware that it is not a valid user. Preventing such an attack is relatively simple. If we move now to the code, the only thing we need to do is to add a very simple command after session start. That command is session regenerate ID. What this command will do, it will rebuild the session identifier and reset it each time a request is made to this website. It's a relatively simple technique and it does not take many resources. Let's try to reproduce the attack now and see the effect. Let's log in as another user. Let's again grab the session identifier, assuming that the attacker is able to do so. In the meantime, we will assume that the user has performed some activities on the website. You'll notice that the session identifier has now changed. Moving back to the attacker website, we will again tamper with the request. We'll take the identifier, which was first copied. We will now go ahead and execute. And you'll notice that we are unable to log in as the user. In this case, the user was test888. However, we are still using the old username, which means that the attack was not successful. For our next topic, we will discuss providing a logout option. This is a very straightforward technique. It involves creating either a link or a button, which gives the user the option to log out. The advantage to this is that all of the session information will be destroyed, which means that any data remaining after a sensitive transaction will be completely erased from the system, allowing the attacker no leverage whatsoever. So first of all, let's go ahead and log in. We'll provide a username and a value. And this is now maintained as part of the session. So if we refresh the page, the same information will continue to appear. However, if we now execute the logout option and then refresh the page, you'll notice that the session data is no longer valid. You'll also notice by looking down at the PHP info screen that no session identifier is present. Moving over to the code, the technique is very simple. It's a matter of providing either a link or a button. And if that link or button is activated, you can provide a block of code, which will destroy the session information. There are three steps which need to be taken. Step number one, unset all of the dollar underscore session data. This is accomplished by simply setting dollar underscore session to an empty array. Step number two, expire the session cookie. In order to do this, you might want to obtain the current session cookie parameters. This is possible by first of all checking to see if the session uses cookies. If so, we use the command session get cookie params to retrieve the session parameters. We then set the cookie, setting the session name, the time to some time in the past, and use the same path, domain, secure, and HTTP only parameters coming from the current session parameters. Finally, step three, we issue the command session destroy. Session destroy will remove the session identifier, 
it will invalidate the session identifier and it will take all of the data on the server currently set aside for that session and put it into the garbage collection cycle. The data is not removed from the server immediately, but it is removed within a reasonable period of time. This concludes part one of preventing session hijacking and forgery attacks.